there's there was probably a little too much for a little while where it's like okay we work together all day then we're at home together in the evening and mm-hmm. you know we're never really apart and so I think uh, two of my sons are have moved out and uh, that helps create a little bit of separation I think. No, that makes sense because you definitely need that that time away. Like as, obviously as much yeah. as you love them, you can be around somebody yeah. far too long. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it it's great and we still try to get together for you know, barbecues and dinners, you know, once a week or once in a while, just so that we're spending time not working together as much as we can. <laughs> That's good. Now, you already, you've already you mentioned the merch already. You guys have merchandise ranging from hats to shirts to hoodies to camping mugs. Where do you guys kind of get the ideas for what you want to sell online? And um, I guess, you know, where did the idea for making your uh, motorcycle uh, with a sidecar kind of your de facto logo as well yeah we i mean we have our primary logo which is like a, a red square with an anchor in it and we use that a lot right. uh, but we also use the sidecar motorcycle just as a i mean people love that graphic and, and things like that i so far i've come up with all of the merchandise stuff and have kind of like designed it myself but we're actually just going through a process um of working with a local merchandising company that wants to, I mean, they only take on apparently one or two brands a year and they want to take our brand on and really kind of blow up the merchandise a lot more. And so um, they're the same company that, that does Snowbird Ski Resort and a couple of local breweries that are, that have some incredible merchandise and stuff. So we're really honored that that they want to work with us. and, And so you'll probably see over the next, six months, a whole lot of new merchandise. Um, it, some of it, I think, I hope will, um, you know, have, uh, you know, I hope we'll have, keep some of the classics and stuff as far as like the t-shirts that have sold really well that we've made. Um, but I, I think we'll have some really interesting new options over the next um, six months. And I just approved yesterday some new beanies that are going to be really cool, like fisherman beanies. So we'll, oh, we'll watch for those in the next, yeah, those should be on the site here in the next probably few weeks or a month. Very cool. Yeah, I think a, a lot of businesses, you know, whether it be breweries, coffee shops, even restaurants that have good logos, good names, I think they just kind of maybe don't think about the merchandise aspect of it. And, like, especially nowadays, like, you can put anything, almost anything on a hat as long as it's a cool logo, <laughs> somebody's going to buy it, beanies, yeah. hoodies, T-shirts, like, the, the art uh, spectrum of merchandise, I think, could be raised to a completely different level if people put a little more focus on that. And I like that this company is reaching out to y'all and wanting to, you know, like you said, they only take one or two clients on a year and build them up. And the fact that they want to work with you guys really shows what you guys have already accomplished and they, you know, want to make it even bigger and better. Yeah, it was it was a real honor and it was cool uh, that we were able to meet directly with the the head of, you know, the founder of that company and stuff. And he was like, yeah, we, we want you guys and we want to work with you guys. And so that was, that was exciting to hear. And, uh, yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's interesting whether it's a brewery or a distillery or a coffee shop, like if, if that's your coffee shop or that's your brewery, uh, people love to like, um, uh, promote it and kind of like, mm-hmm. you know, it's kind of like, you know, you find a, an underground band before everyone else discovers it. You want to kind of show off that you know the cool band and stuff like that. So yeah. I, I think it's it's kind of like that, you know. People are, like, proud of their association with your brand if, if they dig what you do. Right. I guarantee there's people now that are like, oh, yeah, I I used to get coffee from them when they were just the, the motorcycle coffee place before yeah. they actually had the little brick and mortar. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Now they can now they can help uh, – promote you guys to other people and you know more locations could hopefully happen in the future and you know obviously the merchandise sales goes up as well because that you could put that inside your uh shops as well so i mean it just makes sense yeah no totally exactly yeah now uh, i should ask this earlier but where did the name urban sailor coffee come from yeah that can be a long story but i'll i'll give you the shortest version i can um Basically, while I lived in Seattle, um, I had a buddy who was also my rock climbing buddy. We used to rock climb and mountain climb together. And he uh, 
had a passion for boats. He actually worked on boats for a living. And he bought this large, like, 35-foot sailboat, but he only could afford it because it had this broken mast. It had been, like, in a storm, and the main mast got sheared off. And so the the replacement mast was some ridiculous amount of money that he couldn't afford. And so he just lived on this boat um, in Lake Union, which is the lake right by downtown Seattle. So uh, if you ever have seen Sleepless in Seattle, the houseboats are on Lake Union right by downtown, like kind of a view of the uh, skyline. Yeah. Maybe. So he, he had a, you know, he had a moor, a dock um, that he paid for, and this big boat just sat there. And um, we would, you know, sit up on top of it and and, uh, and putt around the lake because it, ha- it did have a motor. Um, we would put around the lake and just drink, and uh, we called ourselves urban sailors because we never left that tiny little lake by downtown Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> so that was also like 20-some years ago. Um, but that name always stuck with me, and I was like, I'm going to use that for something someday. And, and so fast forward to the pandemic, and my son and I are kicking around the coffee shop, you know, motorcycle idea. And I was like, you know, We'll be mostly downtown Salt Lake City and kind of going from place to place, and maybe this urban sailor thing could work for that. And uh, so we tested it with a few people, and they're like, "Yeah, that's cool." And, and then we ended up finishing the wood on the on the motorcycle with boat finish, and kind of made it look a little bit like a boat on top. And so, um, yeah, that was kind of it. Kind of became our identity just that we were going to be, you know, traveling around mostly in urban environments with this coffee thing. That's I love I love that story. I'm surprised nobody's taken that and used it before. That is interesting that you guys were the first ones to really use that. Yeah, unfortunately, I've got a, 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 a trademark pending, uh, which I think is, is going to. Uh, I think we're going to have a registered trademark here in the next month or so. Um, so yeah, that'll be that'll be good. Congratulations ahead of time. That's that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, I have a segment on the show. I call it uh, the five count. It's just five random questions. Uh, just an- yeah. answer them as quick as possible. Okay. Crunchy or creamy peanut butter? Mm. Creamy. Nice. Okay. Uh, if you were a pro wrestler or MMA fighter, what would your name be? Oh, man. Um... Well, I'm going to show my age here. Um, I grew up in <laughs> Calgary, and the Hart brothers were all oh, the rage. Yeah. Brett, the Hitman Hart. Uh, so I'd probably go with the Hitman or something, or you know, something like that. Because uh, yeah, Brett Hart was like a hero of mine when I was a kid. He used to, you know, wrestle the Iron Sheik, and you mm-hmm. know, this is back when Hulk Hogan and you know, Andre the Giant. I mean, this is old school. Uh, I. He, growing up, he was always my favorite, and he's, you know, he's he's still definitely one of my favorites, and, and I have a story about meeting him and just completely being tongue-tied, and I was supposed to do something else because I was working for a radio station, and I was supposed to kind of do a bit with him, but I just was so oh, tongue-tied wow. that I couldn't do it, and so I just wrapped it up, and I left because I was like, I can't, I can't, do this. <laughs> he's, he's my hero, there's no way I'm going to be able to, to do this thing, so yeah. But yeah, I, he's a, I mean, they named, they named the uh, professional hockey team in Calgary after, yeah. after him. I don't know. Yeah, the Hitman, though. Yeah, he's got a bar up there now, and I know he's paired with a rum company, I think. Oh, wow. I'm wrong. Yeah, it's a liquor company yeah. of some sort, but yeah, that, definitely check that out. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe his, his could fight the Rock tequila or something. There's no way he's going to sell as much. Like, I love Bret Hart, but he <laughs> yeah. is not as charismatic as The Rock. But <laughs> That's true. <laughs> the, the Rock's on a whole nother level when it comes to <laughs> Yeah, and his, and his tequila is amazing. His tequila, uh, yeah, all four of them are great. Like, I, I've, I've had them, and they are all amazing. I mean, for the price point, you can't beat that tequila. Like, it, it tastes more expensive than it actually is. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, what are three things people would not expect about you? Well, I think people are surprised when they hear that I grew up uh, Mormon because I own a coffee business. Um, that's been surprising. <laughs> um, for a while, I, I 
thought I was going to be a professional photographer, um, a mountaineering oh. photographer, and uh, I got a chance once to photograph ice climbers with some National Geographic photographers, and that was probably one of my highlights of my life. Um, and I don't do, I mean, I, I shoot photography just for fun now, but people are surprised when they hear, oh my gosh, you had some things published back in the day. That's pretty cool. That's um, yeah. Uh, gosh, that's surprising. I guess that's two. I can't think of a third right now. Oh, I, I worked in the car business. Uh, I think people are sometimes surprised about that, that I've, I sold cars and things and, uh, and now I sell coffee. <laughs> which is based off motorcycles, which is also interesting. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> exactly. That I, that I'm a certified YouTube mechanic, maybe? Oh, I didn't know that that was a thing. Well, it's only a thing because someone made a sticker and I have that on my tool, uh, box. Um, because yeah, my, my motorcycle repair skills are all based on YouTube videos. <laughs> I mean, if you ever so, want to learn anything, you could go down any <laughs> rabbit hole on YouTube, but you could also get sidetracked real fast and all of a sudden you're watching kids unwrap boxes or watching something like, hot ones <laughs> or something like that. So. I, I just think it's fascinating that like I've literally torn apart a complete engine and put it back together with very little extra assistance except for YouTube. Um, and it ran again, which is amazing. So. Yeah. My brother and I bought homes around the same time. He's up in, uh, outside of Toronto. I'm in the DFW area and we kind of, he, we were talking one day about how, you know, I'm lucky enough to have my dad nearby and if I need something fixed, I'll kind of help him or ask him questions and stuff. He unfortunately is, not close to my brother because he is up in Canada. So yeah, he can call him yeah. as much as he wants, but YouTube has helped him out immensely. And so, yeah, you could learn every anything and everything you want on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, most of my guitar skills come from YouTube, which are not great, but <laughs> anything I have is, yeah, is from there. Yeah. So there's a little uh, YouTube product placement, yeah. Yeah, there you go, YouTube, as if you needed more help. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh who or what inspires you oh uh, gosh i i mean anthony bourdain was kind of an influence on me i was really uh i was really sad about um his passing obviously like a lot of people were um hmm. who or what inspires me yeah i I mean, even, um, it sounds corny, but meeting Keanu Reeves and hanging out with him in the desert for about a half a day, I was like, man, if, if, if I was worth the millions that he is, would I still be this down to earth and this cool? I mean, I, I was That's really what... like, I was blown away by how just normal he was and how just approachable and cool he was. And, uh, I, I that, heard that. Yeah. Yeah, it was really inspiring to me because I, I just think most people would become complete a holes if they had his kind of money. Yeah, and you you definitely hear about that, like you know people like uh, Christian Bale and doing you know the things he did and just the, the other random celebrities in general. But like, yeah, the the level of fame he's had since the '90s, and he's still. Like, from what I hear, the coolest, nicest guy, always helping people, but he's not mm -hmm. helping people and then, like, taking pictures of it so that other people right. know that he was doing it. He's just doing right. it because he's a good person. And so, right. yeah, I, I imagine there's far more stories out there that most people don't even know that he's done and he won't yeah. even talk about because for him it's just a regular day helping people. Yeah, yeah. And just, yeah, I, like, I've heard a bunch of those and – I mean, but my experience with him was just that he he didn't put himself above, you know, the crew, the people that he was hanging out with, mm -hmm. and he just seemed, um, yeah, like very giving of his time even. Uh, like it's just uh, – it's very, very neat to, to see that. It makes me think like, hey, there's some good in the world for sure. Yeah, I think 
which is the unfortunate thing, I think, about social media and, I guess, 